Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to see you all here. So in today's video, I plan to answer the five common questions by informaticians get asked all the time. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first question is, what is bioinformatics? And this is perhaps the most commonly asked question when I tell someone that I'm a bioinformatics scientist. Bioinformatics is relatively unheard of, so I would want to give a textbook definition to explain it. So bioinformatics is a field where you apply computational methods to biological data. I know most of it didn't make sense, so I will try to explain what I do as a part of my job. Uh, so basically, uh, I work in a research lab and this research lab is focused on understanding uh, pediatric cancers basically understanding the underlying mechanisms that uh, causes cancer, that causes the relapse and so on and so forth. So we have this biological data from pediatric patients and where I come into the picture is that I apply computational methods and apply bioinformatics analysis to generate some insights from this data and to answer some biological questions. I know this is still not clear so I will try to explain this by giving an analogy here. So we have all played that game uh, called spot the differences between the two pictures where we have one reference picture and the other picture that is in subject where we use the reference picture to try and spot the differences between the reference picture and the picture in subject. So what I do is on those lines, although I'm oversimplifying the whole process. So what I do is we have data from cancer patients and we compare it with data from the normal human being and we try and spot the difference between both of them and try to see what the difference is, where the difference is and how much is it, how much is it different. And the most important question being whether those differences can be leveraged to create uh, therapies which can have clinical implications. So that brings me to the second uh, commonly asked question is what is biological data that I have been talking about uh, in the previous question. So biological data is a data that is associated with a macromolecule and this data can be extremely heterogeneous and can be stored in various types of formats like sequential data, textual data, uh, a quantitative data that can be stored as matrices and so on and so forth. There are a lot of different types of formats these data is stored in but functionally I see uh, biological data is generated at each level in central dogma. And talking about central dogma, uh, we know that DNA gets transcribed to RNA and RNA gets translated into protein. So biological data is generated at each of these levels. At DNA level, we have DNA sequencing data. At RNA level, we have RNA sequencing data. And these RNA sequencing data can also be stored as a gene expression matrix. At protein level, we have protein expression data, protein structural data. However, I just want to mention that there are also other types of data like epigenetic data, histone modification data. Uh, but most commonly, these are the types of data that is generated and people in bioinformatics uh, usually work with. So the third question is, what is the prerequisite knowledge required to get started in bioinformatics? I believe bioinformaticians have to be jack of all trades, if not all, most of them. So since bioinformatics, the world itself says that you have to, you need to have a good understanding in biology and computational concepts. Besides that, it is always uh, preferable to have good uh, statistical background, at least basic statistics, and to have a good hold of programming language. Talking about programming languages, uh, this is another most commonly asked question uh, I get all the time is what programming languages do I learn to get started in bioinformatics? Are there any recommended languages that I need to learn to process biological data? And a simple answer to that question is it really does not matter what language you choose. Uh, I know this is a controversial statement uh, and a lot of the people in the community wouldn't agree but I totally believe that all the programming languages follow the same um, computing concepts so if you know how to code in one language, it really shouldn't be a problem to code in any other language. Only the syntax and the semantics would be different. However, 
there are certain advantages uh, to picking certain languages like R and Python. Uh, and I'm going to advocate today for R uh, because I have been using R since the last three to four years to process biological data. And R has some great packages to perform statistical analysis. So when I say packages, I mean a lot of the code is already written for you. You just need to learn how to use the package, use the function and apply it to your data. In addition to that, R offers great packages to visualize data and a lot of uh, bioinformatics scientists or bioinformaticians code in R. Uh, so that allows uh, new packages to be created to handle new types of data like uh, single cell um, sequencing data. That brings me finally to the last common question that people ask is, how can I start learning uh, bioinformatics? How can I start to gather these skills? And I would suggest uh, before enrolling into any program uh, to take an online uh, free course in bioinformatics. A lot, of, a lot of them are being offered on Coursera uh, Data Camp as well, if you want to learn R specifically and try and take these courses and see what it entails if it interests you if that is something that you would want to do uh, and take it up as a career uh, then i think that's a good starting point besides that i have compiled a document a bioinformatics starter pack where i have put together all the links to uh, learn some of these things uh, it has links to learn basic linux basic r it also provides link to uh, some sources where you can practice your programming skills on biological data. If that is something that really interests you, uh, then please make sure to check out the link in the description below. So that's all I have for today's video. Uh, I'm sure there are going to be more questions, more follow-up questions for the things that we spoke about today. And I can answer them if you leave them in the comment section below. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video and share it. Until next time, see you.